Debbie Marcoux is licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, L076508, Georgia, 69178, Idaho, MLO, 2080237926, Illinois, 031.0058339, Missouri, North Carolina, I210940, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, MLO, 237926. She's the mortgage mom. She can get things done When you're in need and don't know where to go Pick up the phone and call mom All right, so welcome to Mortgage Mom Radio. I am Debbie Marcou. I am the Mortgage Mom. And every week I'm bringing you guys something different about all things real estate and mortgage. Today we have not done this topic in quite some time, and I'm so happy that he is here. I have George Hartman with Credit 360. That is what it is, right, George? Credit 360. Credit Repair in 30. But Credit Repair that. in 30. Okay, well, 360, <laughs> I'm thinking a year. All right, Credit Repair in 30. So I've got yeah. George here with us. We're going to talk all about credit. Credit is so important for you. And I, I loved this. We talked on the, um, well, we talked through email very briefly yesterday and the day before. And you were saying, you know, I said, is there anything new going on with credit that we need to be aware of? And you made a comment and you said, nothing really, nothing's really changed a lot since 2020, but people just don't understand how important that their credit is. So I want you to kind of elaborate on that a little bit. I want I want my listeners to hear and understand why it's so important to know their credit scores, what's on the credit, how many accounts they have, what are their balances, you know, what kind of credit mix should they have? Are they short in an area or not? So talk a little bit about about credit. Why do you feel that it is so important? Well, I mean, it's something that none of us are taught right when we're young it seems like everyone has to learn credit through wisdom and unfortunately a lot of that means mistakes and you know doing things that we're just not real sure of and it takes me all the way back to the very beginning when i got my first credit card i remember i was in florida i got this credit card it had a twenty four hundred dollar limit on it and by the end of the day with my own calculations in my mind of how quickly i could pay it off right? I had new tires and rims on my car. <laughs> I did. I mean, this is true story. You can't even make this stuff up, right? And, and I figured, oh, on my salary, you know, if I put, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month, I'll pay it off within a year. And that credit card went on for four or five or six years. I remember yeah. the truck was long gone. And I had, you know, still paying on the tires and rims that I had bought, because I wasn't taught you know, how to calculate those things and what it would actually transpire with interest rates. And so, you know, for me personally, it's kind of a kind of a full circle because I started making mistakes early and then never was really taught the importance of my credit. So my credit was always always seemed to be average, you know, 650 to seven, a little over seven. But that's like right in the middle. Right. So I'm still not even in control of my credit and every car and every mortgage and everything I've done over my lifetime, I was not in control of what rate and term I was going to get. And if I was taught all those things in the beginning, like I have now over the past 10 years, believe it, believe it or not, I've been fixing credit for 10 years, over yeah. 10 years now. And I think we've this, been working together that long. So <laughs> we, we definitely have. We've helped a lot of people over the years. But, you know, I look back at these mistakes that I made and then looking even in the in the past 10 years after cleaning up my credit, because I started my business because I had my own issues, you know, that I needed to fix. I come from the mortgage business. That's how we know each other in the first place. So I always already had a lot of knowledge, but I never found a company that could help me with my clients the you know and get them all the way to close the way that i you know wanted to be a, as a client how am i going to fix my credit when i even know a lot coming from the mortgage business so now i you know i bought an rv a few years ago and this kind of caps off the story i was in full control of my credit report knowing exactly what was going on with every single portion of my credit and especially my credit cards and when I went to look at this RV to make a long story short, I knew I had a high balance on one credit card. And so I told the RV company, I said, do not run my credit because I'm in charge of my credit. 
and I say, I will let you know when you can run my credit based on this new balance hitting my report. I said, it's going to gain me points in my credit. And I said, so for today, please quote me a rate and term based on 7-Eleven. And they quoted me and it was 10% down on about a $90,000 vehicle. So we're talking $9,000, right? Yep. Some, some, some coin and the interest rate was five, four, nine. Not anymore, remember. but, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. And, 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 and diesel's not 182 a gallon either. Right. <laughs> but the moral of the story is they waited 10 days. My small little $298 payment on a $300 credit card posted. My credit scores jumped to 791. And I called them back. I said, okay, you can run my credit today. They ran it and they called me back and said, would you like your $500 deposit back and your interest rate is 299? Would you right. like to come pick up the vehicle? There was no argument. There was no, they just had to give me the best that they had. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about being never having to cross your fingers, wondering if you're going to qualify for something. And that's where my program has really evolved over the years of us working together is it's now more educational. I treat it as a college education right? What would you pay for a college education on credit to know everything that there is to know about your number one financial tool that you possess? And, and it's one, we have here. yeah. And it's one of the most important things that I don't understand why they don't teach it in school. They don't teach you how to balance a checkbook. They don't teach you how to file tax returns. They don't teach you about your credit and how important that the credit is. And coming from your story, you're absolutely right that, you know, you are in control of your credit, but a lot of people don't know and they hear a lot of things and they believe a lot of things that are actually not even true. So I want to get into a couple of those myths too. Too. Those are kind of my favorite. Uh, I do want to remind everybody that this is an interactive show. I can see my dad's jumped on and said hello. I can see Sandra jumps on. She says, hi, Debbie. Love your new hairstyle. Thank you, Sandra. Appreciate it. I decided to go with a little crimp style today. Um, but I want you guys to know that this is interactive. And if you have questions, I want you to be able to ask them. Take advantage while we've got George here with us because he can get you those real answers on your credit. Um, but, you know, a couple of the myths, George, that I, I want to hit on is, you know, I, I get a lot of clients that call me and Heidi says hi. Heidi just jumped in and says hi, y'all. Um, but, I, you know, I have clients that do call and they say, you know, well, my credit should be really good. I've been using my credit card every month and paying it off. But what they're doing is they're using the credit card. They're waiting for the statement. Then they're paying the balance off and they're being told that this is going to somehow improve their credit report when in reality, it's the limit of the credit card. It's the fact that you have used it once so you can see what a high balance was at one point in time, and then it's actually today's current balance, which is from the statement date. So a lot of people don't realize that either. When that statement comes out and you get that email and it says, your new statement is available. Whatever that balance is on that day is the balance that ends up on that credit report. So you actually want to try to get that balance paid off before that statement comes out. That's what's going to update that credit report to show zero. And then that's what's actually bringing that, you know, that, that credit score up. Like you said, you paid that $298, you waited for that to post, you waited for it to update on the credit report. And then all of a sudden your credit score jumps from 711 to 791. So I want to talk about a couple of the things that you feel uh, are the, the best thing that people can do to get their credit score as high as possible. And I would love you to go into credit mix as well, because I get a lot of people too that say, well, do I need to open another credit card? So I want you to kind of get into credit mix a little bit too. Um, Ronnie uh, jumps on, she says, hello. So, or he, I'm so sorry. I don't know if Ronnie's a boy or a girl, but um, thank you for joining. Appreciate it. L love to have you here. Uh, but talk a little bit, George, about some of the things that you hear that are wrong. Let's start there. What are a couple of things that people will say? Well, I was told I should do this. And you're like, no, don't do it. Yeah, well, one of, one of the things is leaving balances on credit cards. And that is a very common one. And no one seems to know where they got that advice from. But as long as you're active with your card and you can call your credit card company, they are your friend. 
they will answer questions for you. So you could even ask them, you know, how often do I need to use this? Am I in any, um, is there any li a liability if I keep it at zero balance? Um, all of those. Now we're talking about the A plus credit cards here that don't have a monthly fee. If you're talking about credit cards that are your, your new ones that you're just establishing and you're paying a monthly fee, chances are you can leave them at zero at all times because they're not gonna cancel you because you're paying them a monthly fee, right? right. So um, imagine that 30% of your credit score comes from your management of credit cards. Three to five cards is what they're looking for, three to five revolving accounts. But as you're building new credit, now it's a double-edged sword. Let, let me go back and finish the answer to, to the balance question. Okay. Okay, because that was leading me into this. So I asked people back, I'm like, if you had millions of customers that had a zero balance versus a $10 or a $20 balance, what kind of money do you think we're talking about in interest fees, right? And so that's where the myth comes in of keeping a balance on your credit card. But you said something very, very important, and that is check with your credit card company, find out what the, the statement date is, and make sure you're paying your credit card in full, you know, a week before that statement comes out. And especially, especially if you're gonna go get a loan, pay off your credit cards 45 days before you're gonna go see your lender or you allow them to run your credit. So one of the biggest myths, again, is um, having a balance on your credit card or do you need to keep one on there to give yourself better credit. If you wanna save money and maximize your credit scores, pay those things off. Now on the helpful on the helpful side of credit, credit cards, okay, how can I help my credit the fastest? And one of the key things, and especially in helping reestablish credit and clients that I work with a lot of times, um, or even somebody that just likes to limit the amount of accounts they have, right? People are they're nervous about opening a lot of accounts. And I, I think it's very wise when people are very controlled with what they've got. However, they are looking for uh, history. And that's one of the biggest parts of the credit score is long-term history. I'm talking eight to 10 years. So one of the practices that we use, and it's a suggestion, it doesn't cost any money, but the thing to understand is that you are the one at risk if you practice this principle, which is the authorized user strategy, right? So an, right. Authorized, us an authorized user is a, you know, let's say a husband and wife or partners or friends, in my case, add you to their account and that shows up on your credit report. So meaning I had two accounts and I use my story. My story is my business, by the way. I mean, I literally walk people step by step what I had to do to rebuild from a disaster, a couple of disasters um, and bring my scores back to 800. And so that's the walk that we're walking people on. So I had established two small accounts, a $300 account and an $800 account. But the negative side of that is they were new accounts and they were small limit credit cards, right? So I didn't have any history to it. I just had a new account. So I called my friend, he's in Florida. I was in California and I said, hey, you know, would you, would you mind adding me as an authorized user to a couple of your credit cards? Now he was very familiar with this strategy and it helped his, some of other friends. But again, the thing that I needed to realize was that if he runs up his credit card balance or makes a late payment, that goes down on my credit. So it needs to be somebody that you trust and that you, you know, know that their credit is important to them too. So I always say grandma, grandpa, mom, dads, somebody that's got a credit card based on what they're supposed to be used for, which is emergencies mainly. Um, and paying them off every month. So the strategy, that, that strategy helps to add points. So if somebody's really close on their mortgage or whatever, and they have a friend or family member that can, that can add them, you know, to, 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 to their, uh, add them to their account, then that can really help in the points. It and it and it it, it surely does. Uh, I actually put both of my kids on a couple of my credit cards as authorized users, and 
uh, believe it or not, <laughs> I mean, I've got, you know, I've got a boat, I've got cars, I've got a home, I've got, right, I've got everything running. And they actually have higher credit scores than I do because they have, you know, these couple of credit cards that are on there that I've had for years. So they immediately got, you know, 10, 15 years worth of credit history. And, you know, they're 18 and 20 and 22 years old. And so now all of a sudden they've got higher credit scores than I do. So the authorized user definitely does work. We actually use that quite often when we have a client that calls us that is very borderline of being able to get financed we will recommend if you've got a family member if you've got a very really good friend a brother sister mother father um, grandma grandma grandpa um, you know can somebody add you to one of their credit card accounts and we're very specific to say make sure that it's an account that they've had that they've had at least for a couple of years, that they've got a low balance and a high credit limit because all of those pieces combined are what really trigger the difference in the credit score. And they will do that. They'll get added to that card. We'll wait 30 days and then we'll pull credit again. And sometimes we'll see 100 points different in their credit score, which is a giant difference in what kind of loan can we get them? You know, what kind of interest rate, what kind of program, how much money down will they need? It really does make a huge difference. So I'm so happy that you brought up the authorized user because that is a, that that's a key right there. Yep, sure is. Now, what about mix? I asked you, what do you think about mix? You know, I've got people that say, you know, should I, how many credit cards should I have? Do I need a personal loan? Should I have a store card? So we get those questions a lot. What would you say about credit mix? Well, credit mix, I think one of the things like for me, I personally don't have a mortgage on my, on my credit anymore, which is it, which is 50 points. So it's a possible 50 points. So the maximum credit score that I should be able to achieve is actually an 800, right? So 850 be in the max, although we've seen we've seen higher numbers for some reason in some weird way. But also mine bounces a little over 800 now. But the only reason that that has come to pass now, 750 plus is my my goal for every client. There is no doubt in my mind, based on hundreds of customers doing exactly what we instruct, that they can get back to 750 in a two in a two year period in 24 months and 24 months goes like that. I mean, it's unbelievable how fast I can't believe we're at 10 years now. Right. But, right. You know, I was able to get that push back to, you know, from, from seven 11, it went to 791, but then it kind of settled back down after I closed on the auto loan, it settled back down to about 750. Now I I've been pushed up without a whole lot of changes, just time. Cause unfortunately in our credit game, Time is sometimes the only thing that's going to help to build those scores. So that's what on time payments. Okay. So that part of your credit, you know, I could give you two major things. If your credit is hundred percent in order and it's rounded out, the only two disciplines that you need to have is never make a payment late. It's one of the most difficult reversals, removals. It hurts you by 60 to 80 points. And it takes two years to recover one All late payment. Yes. Whether that be like myself, which I fought this and fought this, I missed a $6 monthly fee on a credit card. And so it doesn't matter if it's $6 or if it's a $6,000 house payment, it hits you the same. So I literally had to fight and fight and fight that it wasn't even, it was their fee that I, you know what? That you missed. Like, yeah so many things that they could have just said, oh yeah, I, I see, you know, you didn't charge anything. You didn't have anything on there. You just missed the fee and they would not remove it. I had to wait the full two years. Oh. To do that. It was one of my setbacks that I had four years into my repair process. And believe me, I, I do this for a living and I couldn't get it reversed. So oh. 30, 30 day late payments again, do you know, whatever you have to do, don't make your payments past 30 days late. Right. You know, so explain, I want you to explain to everybody what 30 days late is because we get that call quite often too. Believe it or not, we have a lot of people that don't believe that they can get a loan. They think that they missed a payment, that they were late. Uh, they're expecting their credit report to be horrible. So, I mean, we see this sometimes go the opposite direction where we have people that think their credit report is great and then we pull it and it's not so great. Um, but then we have people that are really, really worried. Like I missed my payment. I was late and they're expecting us to tell them that it's garbage. 
we pull the credit report and there's nothing there. Their credit's actually great. They would have no problem getting a loan. Um, so explain what a true 30 day late is before it's reported to the credit report. You know what the amazing thing about everything you just said is how little people know about their own credit report. Yeah. Right. And all that information is available right there, you know, for them to have and have security and know what it is. So that's what we're pushing this year is education, getting the, getting your credit education, but 30 day late. So it's from the due date, from the due date to 30 days past. If you make the payment late, okay, this is another thing that I call discipline. And unfortunately an error that I made way too many times in my life is getting comfortable where my, my payment was due on the 10th. However, payday was on the 15th or actually no, my, because it, it became late on like the 12th. Right. So meaning I, I had a 10 day grace period. So it was due on the second was late on the 12th. Now I can pay a fee, right? $10, $15, whatever for the late fee, but it doesn't hurt me from my credit standpoint, unless I go to a full 30 days. And let me tell you, it's 30 days. Right. If you call on the 30th day and try to make the payment, if any of that, it's automated and man, it goes 30 days late. And unfortunately that's going to hit your report. And it's very rare that I see those get reversed or removed. So auto auto payment or just making sure you're on top of all your all your bills. Yeah. So, and, and I just, you know, that it's the same with mortgage, right? So if your mortgage payment is due on the first, let's, let's call it September 1st, we just had it and you make your payment on September 15th, you're going to get a late fee like George is saying, but you're not going to get reported to your credit report until you don't make the payment and it's October 1st. So you do have to go a full 30 days from the actual due date. But one thing I do want to kind of drive home is also what George said is you can't call on that 30th day and make that payment because it's not going to post right away. So it's still going to end up at 31 days before it posts and you're still going to get hit with that 30 day late. So you do want to make sure if you, I mean, we get it, right? People do struggle sometimes, sometimes like, like George said, you know, he was, his payment was due on the 12th. He was paid on the 10th or whatever that situation might be. And you might be a couple of days behind when that's the situation. That's okay. Hey, number one, one thing that people don't realize is that they can call and many times with auto loans, credit cards, you can actually have your due date changed. You can pay a couple of extra days of interest to get the due date changed so that it does work with your, uh, with your pay schedule. So, uh, just make sure that you guys, you know, you're paying before the 30th day. That is the most important thing so that it's got time to post and you don't end up with that late on that credit report. So that is a big one. Um, yeah. Michael Manriquez jumped on. He says, hello, everyone. It's been a while. Hope all is well. So Michael, thank you so much for joining. Always love it when you're here and in the chat. I want to remind everybody that we are live on YouTube. It is Wednesday. We started at one. I always try to start right around one and it is interactive. So if you guys have questions that you want to ask, please don't hesitate. Uh, put them into the feed. I'm going to read them to George so that he can uh, hear them and he'll answer them for you. Uh, if you guys want to know when I go live, you don't don't want to miss a show, you've got to text the word mom, M-O-M, to 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU. W-E-L-E-N-D and the number four. If you text the word mom, you will opt in. You will get one text message a week to let you know that we have gone live. There's a link in the text that you can click on it and it takes you straight to YouTube so you can watch us do the show. Uh, I also want to make sure you all know that's the same phone number to call the office. So if you have questions about credit, you can call me, of course. I'm going to have George give everybody his number since he is doing credit repair. Um, we've got like seven minutes of the show left. So I want to make sure that George talks a little bit about his program, how it works, what it costs, some things that he might be able to get removed from the credit. You did mention, George, that you wanted to, that, that 
all of your clients that you're educating. And I love that because that's what Mortgage Mom is all about. This is an educational show, bringing information to people that they might not know. Um, so that's why I love working with you. You're educating them. You're not just helping them clean it up and then boom, they're right back in the same place. You're educating them as to what to do to not only get it better, but then to keep it in good shape. Um, so I do want I want you to talk a little bit about your program and exactly how it works. You mentioned it was like 24 months. Your goal is a 750 credit score. So let's jump into that a little bit. So talk about what can you get off? What can you do? How do you get started? What do you make them do? G give it to us. All right. So uh, I appreciate that because I, one of the things is I found is keeping it very simple. You know, people think it's complicated and it's really not. It's only about a half a dozen things, you know, that you need to understand and comprehend. But my program is actually a one year program. Okay. So if somebody's having credit challenges and you know what? I just took on two clients yesterday that have seven, 711 and 718 credit scores. So they it's not hire... just for the person that's at the bottom of the barrel. It's for everybody and anybody that wants to see improvement. This is a married couple that it's 399. So I discount a hundred dollars per file. They got a 25% discount for two for a couple. So $399, they're going to get one year's worth of coaching and credit help to get their files back in order because they're 27 years old, I think, and they're having their first kids. And they're like, we need to understand our financial world. And we are okay. We can go qualify for a home right now. We could get a car right now, but we'd be paying higher interest rates on those cars. And they're like, it's worth $600 to us to get educated. We would pay that for a college course, right? right. For, a, for, for, four, for four sessions at a college and mine's a one-year program. So what happens is we have an initial comp consultation on the phone, you know, and I'll give out my number now and then I'll give it out again. It's 805-432-6772. And that's, that's his direct cell phone. So you can text him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get yes. the, I, yes. I go straight into the bat line. I don't call anywhere else. It's just straight to George. Yeah. That's my personal cell phone. And that's one of the things about all of your clients is they work with me directly um, from start to finish. And it's a matter of three steps uh, to get them started and get them rolling. I don't ask them to do a whole lot. In fact, we do the more majority of it, but we have about a 15 minute consultation on the phone, get to know each other, find out a little bit about what's going on with, with them. And then I text them the three steps and it takes literally 10 minutes uh, for them to, to set up a profile for me to access their credit, for me to analyze it and for me to get them started. And then um, it's $399 and it covers a year. And in that year, what happens is every, from the start to every 40 days for a year, they get a full, a full analysis, coaching and instructions on exactly what to do to raise their credit score based on what's happening on their credit as of that day. So okay. every, every 40 days for a year. So that's pretty much how it works. So every 40 days, you guys are touching base. You're going over where are you at now? What did we get removed? What did you, you know, how is the credit score looking? What have we improved? Um, why did your credit score drop in the last 40 days, guys? I've seen that <laughs> yeah. happen too, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so no, I like that. I mean, it, and it, it is so important because it also, if I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to have this phone conversation with you every 40 days. Now I'm nervous. I'm holding myself accountable to knowing that you're going to see what I've been doing <laughs> and I'm going to get in yep. trouble. Right. So no, I, I think that that's great. I love that coaching aspect of it. Um, so talk a little bit too. I mean, you, they've got their three steps. They're going to set up a profile. You're going to pull credit. You guys are going to talk about the credit report. So what are some of the things that you're going to ask them to do on their own? And what are some of the things that you're doing? So when it comes to the credit bureaus, we're going to do everything that in our power to help them fix whatever negative items are going on on the credit report. So we'll deal directly with the bureaus with the negative items. The things that we might be asking them to do based on analysis of the credit is lower credit card balances over a period of time. Add another credit card, you know, open a new account or no, 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 don't open a new account because we don't want the inquiry or we don't want the new account because both of those will lower your score. In this particular case, we need an authorized user. Right. Right. And authorized users are only temporary. So we're going to only use those long enough for me to give you the instruction to open a new account. But we don't want to open a new account until your scores get to a certain level. So it's literally baby steps. 
And honestly, I'll bet you I talk on the phone with my clients two or three times. Okay. The rest, so, of, the rest of it comes in the email and instructions and everything. It's really simple. Right. So I want you to give your number one more time because this show, I'm doing it live. People are watching me and we're not going to go anywhere. We're going to keep talking, which I think is really important, but we are coming to the end of our 30 minutes for airtime for radio. So the sound goes to go country. It's on Saturdays at 730. Um, so give everybody your phone number. And for all my go country listeners, if you guys want to continue, you got to go to YouTube and watch the show we just did on Wednesday. So what's your number one more time, George? My number is 805. 805- Four three two six seven seven two. Okay, and it's three ninety nine for one person, six hundred for a couple, and it's one full year. And you're doing credit repair. You're trying to get negative things removed. You're analyzing their debts. You're talking to them about what they need to do, and you're getting them hopefully into a much higher credit score than when they signed up with you. That's correct. All right. I love it. All of the above. I love it. I love it. All right, Go Country. We love you guys. But if you're here with me right now on YouTube, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a super quick commercial break. 60 seconds. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Debbie Marku, the mortgage mom. Have you been thinking about buying a new property or buying your first property and you have no idea where to get started? Well, it's our job here at Mortgage Mom Radio to educate you and to get you that game plan to get you moving forward. Give us a call. It's 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU. W-E-L-E-N-D and the number four. Or head on over to our website to mortgagemomradio.com. You can book yourself an appointment right there. It's a free phone consultation and we'll get you started and on your way. All right, so we are back. Like I said, it was 60 seconds, just kind of breaking the show right there to make it a little easier to send the sound to uh, to the radio station. Um, but for everybody that is here, again, I want to remind you guys that this is interactive. You're more than welcome to ask questions. I know credit is a big thing. We, we, we are using your credit to figure out which loan program that we can put you into. How much money do you need as a down payment? Do you qualify maybe for some down payment assistance? The higher that the credit score is, the better of a, of a, of a loan that you are going to get. I know that there was this huge blow up about a year ago. I'd say it's probably been about a year now, maybe seven months or something. And they came out and they said, Oh, well, people that have lower down payments and lower credit scores are going to get better financing. At the end of the day, it isn't true. It, it's, it did something change in our price sheet? Yes. Did it help to accommodate borrowers that had a little bit lower credit score? Yes, it did. But you're still in so much better shape as far as interest rate and loan program and everything that you can get and down payment that is needed when your credit score is as high as it can be. And so, you know, like George just mentioned his, you know, married couple who are in the 700s, but they're low 700s. And their goal is that they want to have a much higher credit score because they want to be able to have, you know, pick of the crop as far as, you know, which kind of interest rate are they going to get when they go finance that car or, you know, for many of you that are, you know, RVers and boaters and you guys are trying to get those recreational loans, you know, those are difficult to get and you do get much, much better financing and opportunity and options the higher that your credit score is, lower down payments. It, this goes across the board. You get better credit cards, better interest rates on those credit cards, higher lo- higher credit balances, higher limits. Uh, so, you know, your, your credit is everything and it is really important to make sure that we are, you know, keeping that credit score as high as possible. And I love the education aspect that uh, George is bringing to you. He's talking with you about what you need to do. So right before I cut him short, you were talking about, I'm going to tell him if they need an authorized user. I'm going to tell them if they need to open new debt. I'm going to tell them if they need to pay debt down. Uh, what uh, What are some of the other things that you might recommend to someone while you're working on anything that could be negative right now reflecting on that credit report? Well, the other thing that we're going to look at is what kind of negative credit is there? You know, it's really interesting because I could get two clients today. One has one negative item. The other one might have a dozen negative items. They could both be 100 points away from where they need to be. And I could tell you, hey, I'm going to get the person with the 12 qualified first because of what the one is. So that's true. We're going to go through the credit report and figure that out. But one of the biggest things is planning ahead. 
okay, based on what's on that current report and what those negative, especially the negative items, right? Because all besides the negative items, it's going to be all homework for, for my client, right? Okay, we're going to need to do this and we're going to need to do this and we're going to do this. Well, I can't do this right now. Well, let's put it on the white list because we need to get to it at some point and we'll have to figure out a way to get to it. But the biggest thing is charge offs, you know, charge offs with balances. Okay. Mm -hmm. If there's charge offs and there's a zero balance, there's a 60% or higher chance of removal with zero balance. But if there's a balance and it truly belongs to you, okay, we can dispute it. However, we need to play the devil's advocate, right? Because if they verify it, then that's where the coaching also comes in. That's very helpful is the, just the task of trying to attack your, your verified debts, right? And verified debts is, I'll give you one of mine. Mine was, one of mine was a visa. It was an $8,000 visa. It came back verified. I was able to work with them and very, very simply, they had a certain amount of money they wanted. I had a certain amount of money that I could give them. And typically it's around 50% that they, that they're, they were willing to settle that debt. So it's a matter of being able to settle the debts, but also look ahead and say, Hey, look, we have, you know, $8,000 here in debts. We're going to just, we're going to dispute them because we want to also make sure that they are correct. Right. Cause there could right. be m mistakes in there. We just, I say, don't settle a debt till you verify it because you never know. I've right. seen, I've seen the, I've seen the craziest of things. Right? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I mean, I'm serious. So until we verify something, let's go ahead and verify it. And then I'll help you through the settlement process. Okay. okay. The, the other one that just kind of came to mind right now, cause it was me mo again, most of these are my stories uh, is people that, that have a debt on there that doesn't belong to them. Okay. I'll give you an example. I had a media com $328 or something that was on my, I've never had a media com in my life. Right. So I get all this stuff all cleaned up. And for two or three years, I'm fighting this media com for $328. And in the long run, I ended up having to call and pay it, which it cost me $150 or so to settle it and get a removal letter from that collection company. So the only one that was hurting that whole time, was the justification that it wasn't mine. Yeah. So I, I have to tell people, Hey, you know what, if you want my advice on how to clean this up the fastest, you might have to pay something that just doesn't belong to you, but you can't get anywhere with the credit bureaus, unfortunately. So those are a couple of things that happened with me that, you know, definitely come up. But the, I think the biggest thing with the education and also the walkthrough of this one year program is, you know, Debbie, I got, I got tired of people stopping the program. So I call this qualify or quit because either my clients quit the program or they qualify and they go on to have 750 credit scores and beyond. And then they're able to pass that information on to their siblings and their children. And so they don't have the same mistakes that we, a lot of us made until we learned our lessons. <laughs> now, yeah, oh no, for sure. And, and so now while I've got you and some of the things that you're saying are making my head spin because obviously we get these questions all of the time. So we have, you know, we pull a credit report very frequently. We see a charge off. So we see a credit card has a balance, $3,000 balance. It's a charge off. The clients are asking us, you know, do we need to pay that? It's a charge off. It should be dropping off my credit report. It's nine years old. It should be gone, right? So what exactly goes on with these charge offs? Can you talk a little bit about that so that people can understand? Do they owe it? Should they pay it? What, what is the situation? Yeah, so, so basically you have two different scenarios. You have when, it, when an account goes late, it usually goes 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. 120 150 then it charges off which means the original creditor still has the debt they wrote it off and charged it off now let's say it's a five thousand dollar card okay typically the fastest way that anyone's going to recover from a credit challenge i call them challenges is to get it settled and closed as quick as possible right the problem here is that when they're still with the original creditor Typically, they will settle for 50 cents on the dollar, somewhere in that realm. However, we haven't noticed or gotten them to offer deletion letters based on the settlement. So it goes to zero, it goes to closed. Now we're in recovery mode. 
that's for a charge off. Now, if that debt sits long enough, unfortunately, the longer it sits, the better you are <laughs> because it goes to a collection company. Now, what ends up with the collection company is typically now, and especially since 2020 or so, that we have seen all the collection companies mainly allowing the settlement for about 50 cents on the dollar, mm -hmm. but offering a deletion letter. So it's like they never had the account in the first place. Okay. Okay. So my advice is if you have collections, you know, get them verified first, then get them settled as quick as possible, whether it's in the charge off or the collection status, it just is where it is. Because if you wait for it to get there, it might be the same time frame it takes to just collect the points. Right. Right. Because right. after two years, because I mean, you're as a lender, you'll know better than me that if somebody has a typically if they have an open collection or an up, open charge off, it's going to need to be paid through the close of the loan. Because well, if you owe yeah. Somebody else, and, it, and it is it is a little bit different with mortgage, because if it is an open collection and the aggregate is more than a thousand dollars in total. So let's say they've got multiple collections or even just one, but it's more than a thousand total then we are gonna require that it get paid off. Now, when it is a charge off, we don't require it to be paid off. So that we do get clients that will have a charge off that is old, it's seven, yeah. eight years old, and they don't wanna pay it off because in their head they're being told, well, it's gonna fall off the credit report in X amount of time. Now, I get a little bit wheezy when I hear that, a little queasy, uh, because we've actually seen that account then get resold to a new yeah. lender. Now, all of a sudden, it's brand new. So that's why I was kind of wondering if you could talk to, you know, when it's that old, what really happens? Does that debt really ever go away? Do they yep. get lucky if it stays with the one lender, never gets sold, that it would come off the credit report, but it's still owed? So no matter what, it's going to come back to haunt you at some point in time. Like, what what is your suggestion when you've got somebody that has that charge off that is that old already? Well, for one, you want to, there's not somebody at the bureaus waiting for seven years on your particular report to make sure that you get something removed. So you want to be proactive. Everybody needs to be proactive with their accounts. And if you have charge offs and collections, typically it's seven years on those. Cause I do have people that'll do that. They'll, you know, they'll be a year away. They'll, they're in year six, but they also are working with me because they don't want year seven to go by without being proactive about their credit. Right. So you, you want a letter to go out. Okay. You want the proper letter to go out so that it goes to the proper area so that it does get removed in the proper time frame. If it's a, if it's a, uh, um, foreclosure or a repo or, a, you know, any of those, those are 10 years. Right. Okay. Gotcha. But my, I had to change my mindset. I really did and have to say, you know what? I had challenges, but I'm back on my feet. And basically everything that I was responsible for buying, I got it 50% off. That's basically how I had to, I had to treat it. I couldn't just yeah. let it go away. You know, I mean, Debbie, I do have people that call and they say, Hey, you know, I've got $27,000 worth of credit card debt and I need you to make it go away. And that just is not reality. That's not credit repair. That's credit, whatever you want to call it. That's wizardry. That's Harry Potter yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it just doesn't happen that way. There is a process. There's no magic. There's no, hey, let's send them all in and they're all going to go away. That's just not the way that it is. So people need to be walked right through this process so that they don't have to go through it again. Right. right? They, right. they know exactly what's going on in their credit. They never have to wonder again. And again, it's it, we need to be taught that this is the number one financial tool we possess when we're in a senior in high school, not learning as we go you at know, 27. First... Yeah. 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 No, I agree. Um, so Michael jumped on, he says, uh, realistically, what's the highest range of credit score we should, uh, be aiming for what's a healthy range? Well, anything, you know, I'm a seven fifty plus, And I think, you know, Debbie can back it up with the loans. I mean, when you get to seven fifty plus, there's not a whole lot of difference in your, in your programs and rates, whether you're buying an automobile or a mortgage or, you know, you're any of the top rated credit cards, you know, when you're a seven, a solid 750 plus with no late payments in the last two years, with all your collections settled and out of two years, you're going to be golden. So yeah. I say 750 plus is the target and anything above that is great. Like me, I'm, I'm pretty much maxed out at 800 because I don't have a mortgage. 
right? But they're not looking at me any different than somebody that does have a mortgage. So no, no. And, and I mean, very frequently, even when we have people with mortgages and have absolutely excellent, perfect credit, we're, we're lucky to see 800. I mean, let's, let's yeah. be real. Um, you know, seven, 740. So for a conventional loan, uh, 740 and above all get the same interest rate. It, your interest rate gets a little bit higher as you go down in 20 point increments. So 720, 700, 680, 660, right? 640. Um, you're you're going to get the very best, very best, best interest rates when you are above that 740. Now, a jumbo loan, which many people in Southern California are need jumbo just because of the sheer price of homes. Jumbo loans will get you a better interest rate at 780 little bit higher at 760, a little higher at 740, and they go down in 20 points from there. So I, I agree with you, George. I mean, 750 is really a good, solid number. Now, that's not to say we can't get mortgages for clients that have much lower interest rates. I mean, I did a show. I didn't do one last week because of the holiday, but the week before, we did an alternative loan program show. And we've got our FHA loans, and we've got our, our VA loans, and we do have loan products that will allow, you know, those lower 550s, 560s, 600 credit scores. But, you know, we've got a client that is, you know, purchasing a home right now, and she's got a 567 credit score, and she's doing an FHA loan. And the interest rate that she's getting is in the mid eight where if her credit score was at least 660 with FHA, that credit score would have been in the sevens, low sevens, uh, maybe seven and a quarter-ish or so. So it, it really, the credit score is a big thing. And with her, we talked and it was really important. She needed to get into a home. She needed to buy a property. She needs to go somewhere um, with her kids. And so buying the home was more important than waiting the time to do the credit repair. But now, even though we're getting in her into that house, it is really, really important to focus on that credit so that we can get her credit score up and then get her refinanced into a better interest rate for a lower monthly payment. So, you know, I, I like your 750 number. I think it's absolutely perfect. That's not to say everybody's got to wait till they've got a 750, but that number does absolutely seem to get you where you need to be as far as the very best of everything. Yeah, you know, you, you just brought up something super important too is, you know, people that are getting their loans, they're just getting by, they're getting their loan closed, they're getting what they need, right? They're getting even what they want, right? If it's a house in their, in their credits, you know, subject. And if you're listening and you, you closed on a loan at some point with mid 600 scores or wherever the scores are less than perfect, you need to get a hold of us and, and let's get that credit cleaned up. And Debbie can help you get into a, a loan that will save you way more than what it's going to cost you to get your credit cleaned up over time because yeah. it could turn into thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars if you just sit on satisfied that we closed, but you got an 8% or 7%, come get your credit cleaned up and turn around and do a no cost loan into a much lower interest rate. Right. You know, most likely is that's how it will turn it would turn out. So yeah, anybody can get a free analysis from us and it's a quick setup. We analyze your credit. We never move forward and charge somebody unless we know that we can help them. You know, so um, definitely, uh, you know, give us a shout out. Yeah, for sure. So give everybody your information one more time, George. We'll definitely have you on the show again because this was great. I think it's so important for people to hear. Uh, but if anybody wants to get a hold of you, they need, you know, that that credit help. Uh, get give them give them your information one more time. It was credit repair in thirty. Not 360. <laughs> well, it's a 12 month program and I knew there was a three in there. So in my head, I was like, yeah. oh, it's 360. It's, you know, 360 days. Um, yeah. Anyway, say credit repair in 30. So give me your contact details. Yeah. So my phone number is 805-432-6772. Always best to text me first and I'll call you right back. Um, 805-432-6772. Or like Debbie said, my, my company name is Credit Repair in 30. So you can reach me at info at creditrepairin30.com. Perfect. So one last thing I want to talk about. Uh, what are you seem to be um, getting off of the credit reports when you see negative? Are there certain accounts that seem to come off relatively easy or there's some that are super difficult to get off? You know, kind of talk about, you know, expectation. Expectations. I mean, typically if you were in a, in a charge off or, you know, charge off situation or um, collection, Collections at zero balance have a much higher removal rate, you know, over 60%, you know, and as, as the, the debt becomes more closer to the original charge off date, 
because time is your friend, you know, aging and um, that type of thing also helps, you know, the older it is, the easier it is to, to drop it off. Um, again, if it's zero balance, they're not just sitting there wanting to, to validate because you know, they have zero balance. You already cost them a bunch of money. So a lot of times we'll see those fall off because they don't get answered. And then you'll see your occasional, you know, major bank one that just for some reason, you know, got val- didn't get validated. And with that, I always send a disclaimer that we need to wait for two or three credit reports before we, you know, raise the flag or, you know, applaud ourselves. Right, that, right, right, right. You before know, you, the, pot. Yeah, you're popping no, the champagne bottles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, we, we honestly, we do see it happen. I've seen it happen with tens of thousands of dollars, but it's not something I ever throw on the table because it just, it's so rare. It's typically go through the process. Let's get everything disputed. It'll come back. I will lay it out exactly based on what the bureau is telling us, you know, what you need to do next with that particular debt. And we'll walk that, that walk all the way for the whole year if it takes that. So now um, what about, but what about late payments? So if somebody's got a 30 or 60 day late payment on the credit report, are those something that seem to be relatively easy to get off? Are those a little bit more difficult? 50, 50 shot. What are you thinking about those? So if you had to, if you do have a 30 day late payment, my suggestion is call your, call your company first, ask them for a grace. You know, do you have a one-time grace? I've never been late before. You probably have a 50, 50 chance of removal, you know, with a single 30 day late, you're getting harder and harder. If you've had more than one in the last two years, or even more than one in the history of your account, chances are going to be slim going through the credit bureaus to remove a 30 day late, especially if they've called, we almost never see it. Okay. So that's why I just make your payments on time. So you don't have to fight that two year, two year regaining your, your stuff back. Right. All right. Now I'm going to ask you another one that comes up quite frequently. We get calls from clients that have signed themselves up for credit. It's not credit repair. It's a uh, consumer credit counseling. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where yeah. they, you know, they're told, you're going to make us a monthly payment. We're going to get your debts paid off. You're not going to pay any more interest on your credit cards, blah, 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 blah. By the time they get to us, their credit report is an absolute disaster. Um, but for somebody that doesn't have, so, I mean, we're talking about, you know, a lot of clients have debts that they would love to pay off, but the reality of getting the money to pay them off is, is slim to none. And so they're looking at a program like this, like it might be their opportunity to get things paid off. You know, what is your, um, you know, what's your thought process, your suggestion? Do you feel like credit counseling is a good idea? You know, you, you're coming from a totally different angle than me where I'm looking for a great credit report when I'm putting together, you know, a mortgage file. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a really, that's such a difficult one, right? Because every, every person is a little bit different, but in my experience and those accounts that you have, you know, kind of, kind of think it through, think it through the, think, think through the, the life of an account, right? If you let that account go and you're going to be paying less money to someone else for the debts of another company, it's almost like a, it's, it's almost like you're getting double compounded because right. they're going to buy your debt. Okay. Just like a collection company buys the debt from the company and they're going to charge off your debt. So you will end up with a charge off on your credit. Right. So it, that's a tough one. Cause even payment plans are tough. Because people will go make up a payment plan with a company, but their credit score is not going to change. It's not going to change. Right. While so, you're making the yeah, payments until and, it's closed. Right. And what we're seeing is, you know, they've got these credit cards that they were they were on time on. So a lot of the people that are signing up for the program, they're just at a point of like, they can make the minimum payments, but they can't get them paid off and they can't pay more than the minimum payments. And they're just seeing no way out. They, they feel like they're just stuck. They're never going to get this debt paid off. So they're seeing, they're seeing the, the uh, opportunity of, you know, what is being advertised. You know, you're going to make us a payment. We're going to cut the credit card balances down. We're going to get rid of the interest. You're going to make one payment a month like debt consolidation, but at the end of the day, it's not truly debt consolidation. You're not getting a personal loan to pay your credit cards off and then making one payment. So then what, what we're seeing is that these companies, you make them a payment, make them a payment, make them a payment, make them a payment. They're holding your money 
in an escrow account or in, in a savings account and they're holding your money and they're not making payments. So now every month your credit report and is getting a 30 day late, 30 day late, you know, 60 day late, 90 day late, 120 day late. What they're doing is they're waiting for the credit card company to get you into such a pickle that they go, okay, fine you know, we'll negotiate with you. Now, in the meantime, you've made payments to this company, you've got this money sitting in the account, and then the company's going, well, we'll give you X amount to settle the debt. So your debt does get paid off. It truly does. The account does get closed, but in the meantime, and if you had three or four or five different credit cards, you've got 30 days, 60 day, 90 day, 120 day, and then it's revolving 120, 120, 100. And by the time that you're done and all your debt's been paid off, you've got a credit score that is in the high fours. You know, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, so I just didn't know, you know, if somebody does that and they're in that, you know, situation and then they've got all these late payments over and over again, you know, how difficult is that for you to try to clean that up? What would, do you have any other suggestions, a different approach? Do you know any of these credit, cons, you know, counseling companies that maybe aren't, re, you know, doing it that way? Um, you know, so I'm just kind of looking for your take on that person that just doesn't, can't, can't see the light at the end of the tunnel because they're kind of stuck under that debt and the minimums are all they can make. And, you know, they're trying to find another way out of, of the debt. Yeah, and the only other option, which was the option I chose, which was to, to leave them be, right? I wasn't going to be able to make the payment. So I did, I did you know, explore that option. And I decided I was going to take the money that I would be paying that company. So I personally just stopped. But I knew that come six months from now, I might have an opportunity to settle these debts for 50 cents on the dollar. So I start saving my money toward that six months or where it's going to be, because if I can get those settled in six months versus having a one or a two year payment program with a debt consolidation company, look at the timing there, right? Right. They charge off in six months. They go to collection even in a year, in a year from now, I could settle them for 50 cents and get a removal letter. Right. But you were fully well, aware and prepared for your credit score to really tank at that point. Oh, 100%. It was already tanked. It, it's not going to really tank much more after your first, you know, 30, 60, 90. These, it's going to kind of just tank and go to one spot. But while that's happening, you can be working in other areas of your credit report, credit cards, you know, good, good stuff that when you get to that, all of a sudden it's a year, two years down the road. Those are a thing of the past. Okay, so let me ask you one more question, then we're going to wrap up the show. And this is going to, this is a good one. It's kind of a doozy, though. So at what point in time, and have you ever looked at somebody's credit report and said, it's time for bankruptcy? Personally, no? No. No. Personally, okay. Personally, so I, I want to hear, I, 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 hear I want to hear why, you I, know, because, and, and I get people that ask the question, right? I mean, we're getting people that are asking that question, and I bankruptcy is something that is so hard to come back from, but you know, let's, let's, um, I, I want to hear I, your I would, thought process. I would say basically because of the, the, what I just said about the recovery, the recovery, cause I've been down that road too. <laughs> That's part of the story too, you know, and it took way, way longer to recover. And it was just a, because I had no guidance at the time, it was literally way, it was so long ago. I don't even remember how long ago, but it was for like $18,000. And I just felt like that there was just no way out. Right. right. But what I ended up, if I would have had the other way around to say, okay, I would need seven grand in a year from now or so, and then put a plan together to get that together. Right. I would have, it would have been a lot easier. But the recovery not... time, the recovery time from the bankruptcy is the hardest part. I mean, if you had 18,000 in debt and you literally just stopped paying on it mm -hmm. and started putting a couple hundred bucks a month to the side, a couple hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks. Yes, your credit is going to get destroyed because you didn't make the payments, uh, but you call and like George said, you get it settled. Now, all of a sudden the account is settled. You settled it for half of what you owed. Uh, and now you can start to rebuild with where those bankruptcies, even in lending, you know, you've got to have a minimum of, you know, three years since the bankruptcy, sometimes four years. Uh, sometimes if you're looking for that jumbo option, like I mentioned, you know, where you've got higher priced homes, you're talking about seven years since a bankruptcy. We've got some lenders that won't 
even do a loan for you if you've ever had a bankruptcy before, um, yeah. ever in your, in your lifetime, you know, and, and those are just different jumbo lenders and portfolio money. Um, but you know, it, it is definitely, I, I see a much longer recovery period from a bankruptcy than I do, you know, from somebody that just absolutely just let the credit report go and they had a ton of collection accounts. Um, but, but it is, it is something that they have to be able to save the money to, to settle those debts. So if they're at a, in a situation where there is absolutely no way that they could put money aside to settle any of that debt, then, then at that point, then I would say, you know, bankruptcy is probably the way to go because it's obviously yep. chapter seven is going to clear the, clear the debt and you're not going to owe it. And you're going to have a long recovery period, but the, the debt did go away. Um, but your recovery period is pretty brutal and it's pretty long. Yep. For sure. For sure. Yeah. We're on the same page on that one. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So it, we're, we're at our hour. We're going to go. I want you to give everybody your number one last time. And then George, um, thank you so much. And we'll have you back again for sure. Cause this was great. I enjoyed it. All right, cool. Yeah. My number is 805-432-6772. My name is George Hartman with credit repair and 30 and give me a text and I'll uh, get back in touch with you. We'll have a chat and see how to get you to 750 plus. I love it. Thank you so much, George. You have a great uh, rest of your afternoon. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Debbie Marcoux is licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, L076508, Georgia, 69178, Idaho, MLO, 2080237926, Illinois, 031.0058339, Missouri, North Carolina, I210940, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, MLO, 237926. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done When you're in need and don't know where to go Pick up the phone and call mom <laughs>